Yo, what's going on guys? This is Keaton with Hook'em Rolls. And today's video is going to be um, kind of me just talking about a few things. At least the first part of this video. Um, I actually just recorded the second part of the video. Um, I guess if that's how you want to look at it. Um, you know, just a short clip showcasing three hatchlings, I guess you can say, that we produce this season that I'm super excited about just how they're progressing. Um, especially since two of them technically probably weren't going to make it without my help. So that's pretty cool. Um, but you, you may notice, um, things are different here, you know? Um, so we actually took this rack right here and moved it from over here and put it obviously on the, uh, stand with all the others. So that being said, um, freed up a lot of space over here. So, you know, right here we have boxes um, we have our perlite over here in the corner. Then we also have an incubator. Um, and then just have this blank space right here. So that being said, I want to kind of get your guys' opinion on what you think I should do. So if you if you know, if you watch the videos, you know that Brent, shout out Brent, um, we did a trade. And traded the two snakes for um, two of these. So this is the first one. I've been using this as like a cleaning uh, table, which works really good because it's got really big uh, casters on it. You know, works really well in here. You can literally just push it wherever I want to push it. And, um, you know, when I'm over on the adult side, push over there. Over on the hatchling side or sub-adult side, I can push it over here. Perfect. So this is going to stay in the center. So we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way so that way we don't get confused. Well, like I said, he made me two. So I have an identical desk to this um, sitting directly outside here. I just got to have another person to help me put it through the door because it's wider than the door. So we have to flip it upside down and put the legs first uh, to get in the door. Anyway, you see, I took out, there was two of these white desks in here. The other one was a little bit longer, but they were both these little cheap white desks. So I took this out. I took the U-line cart that was right here that you saw in the previous video, and it is sitting out there as well. That's all going to the rat room. If you guys are familiar, you watched a few videos ago, you know that we're finishing out the rat room right now, trying to get that done. Um, actually trying to move the rats, the rat racks in there by hopefully um, Thanksgiving, which I guess technically is this Thursday. I'm filming this on a Sunday night um, before, you know, the week before Thanksgiving, I guess you could say. And um, yeah, so the goal is to get the rats in there and get everything situated. So I went ahead and moved out this U-line cart because it's going to be perfect for the rat room. And um, that table right there, because that'll be perfect to put up against the wall. And, um, you know, whatever we decide to put on it, be awesome. So, sitting out there, just waiting to get in the room. Anyway, as you see right here, the elephant in the room is all this space right here. So, what are we going to do? So, this is my this is my opinion on what I think is going to work. But I want your guys' opinion as well, because you're just as much as part of this as I am. I mean, you guys are basically the reason I'm doing this. Um, so, what I think, get this other table in here. Put it right there, okay, um, in this corner, okay. And what I'm thinking, the reason I'm, the reason I say this is because I want to use this other table as the um, quote unquote social media table, okay. That's what I'm, that's what I'm calling it, just because I want to have a name for what it's going to be used for. So basically, I'm going to get my laptop, plug it up. I'm going to get some speakers, plug it up, and I'm going to buy one of those uh, raised draftsman chairs. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. You know, they're just taller chairs, basically office chairs. Um, you know, because this desk is super tall. I mean, this desk is probably every bit of, I don't know, four, four and a half foot tall. Probably, yeah, probably four foot tall at least. It's a big desk. I wanted them that big because when I'm cleaning snakes, it's easy just to throw a tub here. I'm not having to bend over. You know, it's it's like right to the side of of how tall I am. It's right to my belly button. I'm like 6'3", so it works perfect for me having a taller desk. So that's why I wanted to put this one over here. And I'm thinking, you guys can let me know, I'm thinking about putting a TV mount up on this like side right here, getting one of those mounts that you can turn, you know, like 60 degrees or whatever, 40 degrees, whatever the mounts are that are going to be best for the TV. I want to put a mount here and then put a probably 50, I don't know, maybe a 40, 45 inch TV there I'm going to buy. So um, I was looking on Amazon and, you know, Black Friday's coming up and there's some deals on some Roku TVs. You can get a 50 inch Roku TV, smart TV, 4K, um, for like 200 bucks. And then you can buy the Roku speakers. So there's wireless speakers that go with Roku TVs. And I'm thinking about putting one up in this corner right here, making a little mount for that corner, and making a mount for this corner. 
And basically that's just gonna be, so when I'm in here, um, you know, cleaning and I've got the table, you know, got my tubs on the table, everything, I can turn this TV on right here and then, you know, pull it out and then have a, a TV to watch YouTube. You know, and especially since we have the Starlink over here, I'm hopefully gonna get this set up. And the only reason this isn't set up right now is because I think I'm gonna go to Verizon tomorrow. And uh, I don't have much LTE signal in here. I've only got like one or two bars because it's a metal building. But, you know, I gotta run all this through something. So it's either gonna have to be mounted up on the top of the building, which this isn't even the building. I mean, the building is way up there. So I mean, they're gonna have to get it mounted and ran this all the way down through the top of here to this modem, or I'm gonna have to work with uh, like some sort of LTE Wi-Fi. The good thing is Starlink is a 30 back money day guarantee. So, um, you know, it was 700 bucks or something to get all this stuff. And then it's 120 bucks a month, I think, to run it. And right now I'm only on like not even a week of owning it. So I'm going to try just last, last resort. I'm going to go to Verizon. I'm going to buy the business Wi-Fi. Um, it comes with a money back guarantee as well for 30 days. I'm going to try it in here and then just see if I can get any signal. Cause if I can get signal in here, LT Wi-Fi works amazing up at the house for us. We have one in the house and it runs two TVs, you know, basically every day, either one of us is on or two of us are on some sort of streaming service, whether it be Netflix or whatever for an hour before bed, um, or we're on Wi-Fi. you know, I'm uploading videos, I upload most of my YouTube videos from there and it never runs out throughout the whole month. And it's only $45 a month, which is crazy. So that being said, I think the Wi-Fi, the business Wi-Fi is like 50 or 60 bucks a month, but you don't have to, if it works, you know, you don't have to run any of this cord or anything. So I'm hoping I can go up there tomorrow and get that and it may work because if it does, I'm going to send this back. I know this is better because this is actually a direct, you know, plug into your router, which is obviously going to be more stable than if you have LTE, you know, connection coming through walls. But, you know, right now I really just want to be able to run YouTube on a TV while I'm cleaning tubs when I'm in here, you know, I'll, I'll watch a lot of YouTube, you know, <laughs> I know you guys are watching this on YouTube, but I watch a lot of not just snake content, you know, I'll, uh, watch a lot of car content, you know, a lot of racing channels and things like that. Um, you know, I also watch a lot of business content and, you know, ways to, to make money off of other investments. So, you know, I want to be able to watch this while I'm, my goal was since I had this room was to get to that point where I have a setup where I can watch YouTube, you know, in here. And then obviously, um, if you guys tune into the last video, you heard me talk about a podcast. So that's the reason I want this desk in here. So we're going to get the computer set up. Delante and I are going to start a, our own little YouTube podcast every week, I think. I think we're going to start hopefully next, the first of next month is what we were talking about today. And um, basically it's going to be us talking for 30 to 45 minutes on a, a specific topic that we're going to, you know, hopefully pick, um, you know, a week ahead of time. We're going to do a nice YouTube thumbnail and we're going to have everything up on both of our YouTube channels. Um, so that way you guys can put it on your calendars and tune in. And basically it's going to be for 30 to 45 minutes and we're going to be talking about a specific subject, whether it be snake related or, um, you know, snake money related. That being said, like it's not going to be an off brand uh, podcast. Like we're going to be talking about reptiles. Um, you know, it could be anything about hygiene, um, on the snake side, or it could be, you know, all the way down to, you know, pairings and things like that. Some episodes we may be, you know, pulling the camera off of the tripod and going around and talking about things. If we have a, a specific project that I have or Delante has, and we want to talk about, you know, maybe we'll come do that and we'll open up tubs and talk to you guys. Or, um, the other times we're going to have guests on, you know, between both of us, I think we even, you know, me only being in, in the industry for three years, uh, Delonte has been longer than I have. We have some connections. Um, and I think we can have some really special guests on and hopefully as it grows, we get more. So that's going to be the main reason why I'm doing all this stuff because, you know, the, the TV is going to be nice, but I want to start the reptile podcast and, um, you know, I just want to have internet connection down here to upload stuff, um, you know, and, and just be able to hang out down here. Cause this is basically my man cave, um, you know, as it stands. So that's where all this is going. So all that being said, the, the back to the root of the question is as of now, we're keeping this here because this is where the ultrasound machine is, you know, um, for now. And then obviously this is where we're keeping our shipping supplies. 
all this is going to move. As soon as we move out of the nine by nine uh, or 10 by 10 room, whatever it is over, you know, where the rats are right now, back over that way, um, all this shipping stuff is going over there and we're gonna create a shipping room. So I may end up just taking this entire uh, white desk and putting it over there, maybe buying one more for that room and just making it a complete storage shipping room. So literally it's gonna have, you know, one of these in the center and then maybe build some cabinets on the sides or buy like, you know, some pre-made cabinets and it's gonna turn into the shipping room, you know, because as we go on, you know, right now, you know, we didn't have a, I mean, we've been doing this for two and a half years, basically. So we're two and a half seasons in and uh, yeah, we've produced some decent animals, nothing crazy, but, as you guys know, if you've watched the channel, we have some really nice quality stuff, um, some really nice quality projects, and we plan to make some really, really high quality animals this year and the following year. So that being said, you know, we want to have a space that grows with us, and that is literally going to be that space where the rats are. You know, there's a whole lot more room. It's basically half of the size of this room is going to be just a shipping room. So pretty cool there. Um, but that being said, this may move. So where would you like to see this other desk? Do you think it should be here? Or do you think this desk should be over here? Um, you know, but what am I going to do with all this other space? Because right now this is here. But, you know, I may move this. I'm going to have to buy another table of some sort, but it doesn't have to be this big. And it can be a little bit taller for the ultrasound machine. You know, all I need to do with the ultrasound machine is have room for like one tub at a time. You know, because we're not going to be ultrasounding, at least for me, I'm a one-man show. I'm not going to be ultrasounding multiple females at the same time. And I may even buy a cart. So I may even buy, a, you know, like a little cart system that you see some of these big guys have that basically you put this in the cart and then you can wheel it around to whatever tub and then plug it into the wall and be done. You know, I can just run an extension cord from over here, wheel the cart around here, plug it in, boom. I don't even have to pull the females out and pull them all the way over there. You know, and that's probably what we're going to do. So technically... All this is going to be gone. This can literally just go into, um, you know, the, the center drawer and literally be brought out as we need it. So what should I do with all this space right here? TV is going to go up here. A desk is going to be somewhere in this vicinity because there's nothing else here. You know, right now there's nothing here. But if you guys know, I've talked about, you know, in the past, I'm going to upgrade to all complete Freedom Breeder racks. So we're going to sell... Uh, this one, two, the two fifty five forties, the three seventy thirties, um, and then we're gonna sell everything but probably these two right here. We're gonna sell everything else, or maybe maybe these. We may sell this hatchling, um, but we're gonna keep you know two racks, and we're gonna sell everything else. Everything else is gonna be gone. We're gonna upgrade the incubator. This is gonna stay, but not in this room. This is gonna be literally just for the tortoise eggs, and it's gonna be gone. We're gonna buy a, um, I think this next year. We are going to buy a um, one of the hot box incubators. So we're gonna go with that. And all this is gonna be Freedom Breeder. Hopefully by middle of next year. Big investment. I mean, we're talking, you know, probably 12 to 15 grand at least. Um, we're talking four, three to four rack systems. You know, it's gonna be expensive. But, you know, there may be, I think there's enough room to fit two Freedom Breeder racks here, depending on the size. You know, maybe two 70 30s here. And then right here, probably maybe three, um, you know, so I may not even need this space, like I'm saying. So what should I do in this space? You know, without me rambling too much more, what would you guys like to see in this space right here? Give me some ideas. I'm not going to put any other animal species in here uh, right now because I do not want to contaminate anything. The only thing that's in here is this tank, and that's staying in here for now. In the future, when we do build... I plan to do like a showcase room and basically that's going to be where all the other species and all the other cool shit's going to be. So for right now, this is what we're working with. I need a room that is not going to get contaminated with other species. I don't care if it's, you know, the only thing else I would keep in this room would be another python species, you know, and even that it's still iffy. So that being said, guys, videos, you know, probably over 20 minutes long. Please tell me what you think I should do here and you're going to see the next clip of the video now. And um, like I said, thank you guys so much for the recent support. I'm so over the moon about this channel and I'm so excited. All this guy, all this literally is for you guys, you know, for you to help. It's for, it's for me, but it's for you guys as well because we're in this together. So thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video. Hope you enjoy the next clip. Peace. All right, guys, next clip over. I'm going to pull out these 
few snakes and show you guys what I'm super, super excited about, um, you know, that I have been talking about. So, we'll set her up right there. Other girl. She's in shed. Okay, so forgive the rat poop. We actually just fed last night, so. I'll be cleaning them up here shortly. She's in shed, but. So these three right here are super special to me. So I'm gonna kind of start with this girl. So right here, this girl is from the Puzzle Project. So you guys may remember um, the crazy female that we picked up. Uh, Jonathan actually picked her up from a from somebody he knew. Um, she is a Super Pastel Phantom Mojave Pinstripe Wookie Het Puzzle, okay? And um, he picked her up, and sure enough, she actually ovulated in the bag, <laughs> which is crazy. He paired her to a Cinnamon Hypo Puzzle Mail, and then he also paired her to a Pastel Wookie Double Het Hypo Puzzle Mail. Sure enough, the Double Het, um, you know, Hypo, or the Double Het Hypo Puzzle uh, Pastel Wookie took her. So... You know, we ended up with some crazy animals. And uh, this is the only girl that I have left in the entire clutch. I sent the rest of them to Jonathan because I was just, they were stunning. I mean, that was that one crazy looking cow retic um, female. That literally looked like a cow retic. Um, but anyway, this girl is freaking turned out to be wicked as well. She's in shed, but look at the splotchiness. I know it's hard to, hard to tell right now because the way she's sitting, I'm not going to jack with her too much, but... She is absolutely gorgeous, and there's no telling what she's got in her. I mean, just wicked looking. So that's the first girl, and like I said, she, um, these first two I'm going to show you, like I said, they almost didn't make it because they didn't want to eat at all, which is pretty cool that now they're thriving. This is the same girl. I mean, she ate last night. She didn't take a meal. She almost didn't make it, and then I had to force feed, and then now all of a sudden she's slamming food. As you see, she's pretty chunky. Um... I'm going to go ahead and pull her out since she's got some some uh, rat poop on her. But look at this beautiful female right here. Look at this. I mean, she's a little shy. But just look how beautiful she is. She is stunning. And like I said, she almost didn't make it. I'm glad she did because she is hold back central. I mean, just one of the craziest snakes I've hatched over the past two and a half seasons. I mean, just look at the wide blushed banding on her. She is beautiful. But um, yeah, so this girl right here is a pastel, a very extreme example of a pastel chocolate GHI clown. But like I said, she almost didn't make it. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just so glad that, um, you know, she took on because she's going in the whole back rack and staying there. But this is, this girl's like, I want to say the quote unquote most improved. Okay. Like I was checking her out yesterday when I was cleaning. Um, and I mean, just look at her, look at the white sides, look at the blushing on the sides coming up here. I'm not going to mess with her because, like, like I said, last night was feeding day. And, uh, you know, they're all fat and happy right now. So I'm not going to mess with them too much. But look, look at the white sides. Look at the blushing coming up on her. You see that? I mean, she almost looks calico. And she's a... Um, pa so I'm pretty sure she's pastel, obviously, just because of the blushed out back pattern. I'm going to say she is a pastel, inchy, pinstripe, OD... And she's double het, DG pied, and 66% het clown. And she was paired to the inchy DG het clown boy. Or not she was, but the mom was. And the mom was a pastel, um, yeah, pastel OD pinstripe pied. So, pretty cool, honestly. She was the only one to make it out of the clutch. She Only one egg made it. There were six of them, and they all went bad. And sure enough, it was a, she was a female. And just look at her. She's stunning. She's got that crazy ringer on her. And then the sides are starting to really widen up. 
almost looks calico. Um, she's a freaking monster. As you see, she's in the hatchling tub and she's about ready to get upgraded here in the next couple hundred grams. And I'm just, I saw her yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, you, she's got to be the most improved baby from hatchling. And she looked amazing as a hatchling, but um, she really, you know, stepped up the game when she started growing. So it's just crazy to me, you know, um, I don't, the mom's not here, it's with Jonathan and Callie, but I would show you the mom. But anyway, she is amazing. And like I said, I made this video two times already. And, uh, you know, it really sucked because the first time I made this video, um, we talked about a lot of cool stuff that I probably missed on this, on this side of the video. But, you know, again, guys, lots of cool stuff coming here. Um, you know, breeding season's already starting to come back on for us. We have the Cinnamon Hep Puzzle Girl. Um, she just shed out and she's over 18 millimeters now and she was paired to the uh, really, really nice male, the Pastel Cypress Stranger Hep Puzzle Male. So really hoping that that clutch goes the right way for us this year because last year the Cinnamon Hep Puzzle Girl she laid seven, or actually this year, I mean, she laid seven. She's deep in blue, but she went to the GHI Hit Puzzle Mail, and uh, we held back this little dime right here, which I believe is just a ringer cinnamon puzzle female. As you see, she's got the crazy, crazy pattern. Um, but yeah, no, she produced her, and then we produced another visual, just a regular puzzle mail that was stunning that we ended up selling uh, to Brent. Shout out Brent again. But, you know, lots of cool stuff happening here, guys. I mean, you just saw um, that Pastel Ultra Mail is locked up. I think next on the list is this Pastel Lesser Het Puzzle Female. She's growing some nice follicles. And then um, this uh, Hypo Het Clown Female that I showed you in the previous videos. Um, so the stranger wasn't quite, quite ready. I will show him. He's over 800 grams now. He's a monster. I mean, just look at this. Look at this beauty. He's a beast. Anyway, he's not quite ready to, uh, to uh, lock yet. So we ended up... Throwing in, I think he's deep in shed. Yeah, he's deep in shed. This pastel super GHI chocolate hit clown male. And he ended up locking her for like over 24 hours. So that's pretty cool there. I mean, you're talking GHI, missed the pastel and you hit a GHI chocolate clown head hypo. I mean, you're talking really cool stuff there. So lots of cool stuff coming, guys. All the sub adults here are basically going to breed this next season. They're all, um, you know, around the two year, year and a half year old range. And uh, they're all monsters. Like, I'm I'm just so excited, guys. Like, so much cool stuff coming. Again, let me know what you would do with this corner right here. Um, you know, this is temporary because the shipping will go into the old rat room once we get that done. And I'm just super, super excited, guys. Um, lots of cool stuff coming here. And uh, it's only, only the beginning here, really, guys. So, again, I appreciate the, the support on everything. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. And we will see you in the next video. Peace.